theorem we shall see if e is given to be a finite separable extension of a field f then e is a simple extension that means for these two conditions finite and separable that implies simple extension so we assume these first two quantities and we will prove that the given extension is a simple extension so what all cases could we have the first case could be this f is given to be a finite field and in the other case this f is given to be an infinite field so these two are the possibilities in the first case if f is finite field now we have this f we have this e as an extension of f and the properties of this e are given to be that e is finite and it is separable finite means it would have a finite number of elements within it and separable means all the elements would be separable so that means uh, if there is a polynomial irreducible polynomial that polynomial would split into linear factors and would have distinct roots so that is what we are given now in the first case we are assuming f as a finite field if f f is finite that means and uh, we also e is given to be finite so that means we have this result which says if e be a finite extension of a finite field f then e would be written as f where alpha has been adjoined to it so e is equal to f alpha for some alpha belonging to e so now if we have written the given field in this form this is according to some previous result so we would say that the finite extension of f is simple why because we have now written this to be some a lower field and one element adjoined to it it is called simple if it would have all the simple roots so that means you when you adjoin this one particular element to that particular field so we, we would say the given extension that becomes simple extension so for in first part we are done so let us see the second case when this f is considered to be an infinite field so in this second part we will consider f to be infinite and all these conditions would remain the same because they are the given conditions that the extension field is finite and it is separable so in the second case as e is finite extension therefore e could be finitely generated so that means we have finite number of elements how many n in number n in number so that you could construct this whole of this field through the elements of f and these n elements adjoined to this field f where all these elements which you have adjoined they are algebraic over f why because e was given to be finite extension if this is a finite extension that means it is also an algebraic extension if this is an algebraic extension that means every element every element of e is algebraic so that means all these elements which we have considered from a they are algebraic over f so this is what we have with us now we are to prove that this extension field is nothing but the simple extension so how we will prove we for uh, firstly what we will do we will prove that the finite extension which we have considered to be f a1 a2 up to an firstly we'll prove that for two elements when you adjoin two elements to f say alpha and beta so that becomes a simple extension next we will prove if we adjoin three element to it then this would be a simple extension say f of theta f some other element theta and so on so at the end we would say when you adjoin a1 a2 up to a n elements to it so that would also be equal to f of theta so that means the given extension would become finite uh, or simple extension so uh, firstly we'll see how can we prove that the given extension where e is defined to be like this e is equal to f of alpha beta where alpha beta are the elements algebraic elements of e which are adjoined to f for this extension we would say there exist an element theta of e such that what would happen f of alpha beta would be equal to f of theta so this is what we would prove here okay 
So ultimately, what was f of alpha beta? F of alpha beta, this quantity was nothing but it is it was e. So that means we will prove that e is equal to f of theta. That means e becomes simple extension when we adjoin two elements to it. So this is firstly what we are going to prove. So for that, what we are doing because these are we consider alpha from e and we consider beta from from e which are algebraic elements now because they are algebraic elements so corresponding to these elements in the extension field we would have some polynomials here which would serve as the minimal polynomial for these two elements alpha and beta so we consider px and qx as the minimal polynomials of the element alpha and the element beta over s so now because this is the minimal polynomial it would have certain degree and for that degree suppose the degree is m n in this case so we would say alpha 1 alpha 2 up to alpha n be the roots of this polynomial px and similarly if qx have degree m so in the, that case we would say beta 1 beta 2 up to beta m are the roots of the corresponding polynomial qx so this is our, uh, our assumption only. So now, because E is also given to be a separable extension, this is given to us in the statement of the theorem. So we would say all the alpha i's, they are simple, that means they are distinct in nature. They are occurring only once and no alpha i, that is no root is being repo uh, repeating here. So, and this is true for all alpha uh, in this range 1 to n and all beta j's from this range 1 to m. So that means all these alphas and all these betas they are separate simple distinct elements. Okay. So now by assumption because f is infinite so there exists an element a belonging to f such that this is not equal to this quantity. Why? Because our extension here is infinite. So we can have such an element which is not equal to this. That means out of a whole lot of infinite elements, there would be one element which would satisfy this condition for these indices. That means i varies from 1 to n, but j is varying here from 2 to m. Notice that we have uh, eliminated this variable, uh, j is the, is, uh, this index j is equal to 1 from it. So now, According to this, uh, what we can say, we, can, we will say that we can multiply this term on the left hand side. So, it would be A, beta minus beta J. This thing is not equal to alpha I minus alpha. And so, we can shift this alpha to this side and we can shift this A into beta J to this side. So, we will have A beta plus alpha that is not equal to alpha I plus A beta J. Okay, so this is the case. Now what we do, we by assumption, we by our uh, assumption, we are setting this theta element to be A beta plus alpha. Okay, so this is by construction. We are assuming this to happen. That the, uh, this quantity A beta plus alpha that is equal to theta. We are naming this quantity as theta. So now because what is this quantity a beta plus alpha, a beta plus alpha was not equal to this quantity and this is equal to theta. So that means theta is also not equal to this particular quantity. So that is what we are saying, we are saying theta is not equal to this particular quantity. So now from here we can shift this a into beta j to left hand side. So it would be theta minus a beta j which is not equal to alpha i. So from here we have this for all the i indexes and for the j indexes except j not equal to 1 okay so another construction what we are doing we are constructing some polynomial h of x in f theta of x so that means here all the coefficients the all the coefficients of the polynomial h of x are now taken from f of theta which is the extension field of f so that means uh, this polynomial is defined in such a way that uh, instead of x we are writing it to be theta minus ax and the coefficient belongs to f theta of x. So now 
what we do see we see whether this beta is a root of this polynomial or not so we just substitute replace this x with beta here in this above expression so in effect we would have h of beta so that would be equal to p of theta minus a into in place of x we have written beta so now what is this quantity theta minus a beta if you see theta minus a beta from here theta minus a a beta that would be equal to alpha so this thing is equal to alpha and we know because in the very starting we have assumed this alpha to be the root of the polynomial p of x so that means this p of alpha would be zero so in effect we would have h beta is equal to zero so from here we can conclude that beta becomes the root of this polynomial h of x but also we have supposed that no beta j is a root of h x whenever j is not equal to one so accordingly beta is a root of gx this we know because this we have assumed by ourselves that beta is a root of gx but we have shown that no beta j is a root of h of x so next we consider this g of x to be some polynomial in f theta of x so that means uh, we can also define a polynomial ax belonging to f theta of x which is the minimal polynomial of beta over f theta why this is so because we have just uh, written this that f is the sub field of this f theta or you could say f theta is the extension field of f and because this qx belongs to f and ax is the minimal polynomial so that means qx belonging to because it was present in f of x so it would also be present here so we would say this is some polynomial here in this extension field so that is why we would say this minimal polynomial would divide some other polynomial q of x here so this is according to this result that the minimal polynomial a of x would divide this polynomial q of x and similarly h of x is also some other polynomial in f theta x from here because we have defined it in this way so that is why we also say because a of x is less than h of x so it also it is because being the minimal polynomial so it will it will also divide this h of x so any root of a of, a of x will be a root of both q of x and h of x but the only roots of h of x and q of x is beta we have just seen that the root of uh, this h of x is beta and for uh, this q of x is also beta that is what we have seen so that means x minus beta is the only common factor here so that means this minimal polynomial would contain only the terms x minus beta why because because beta is a common root for both hx and qx so now we have considered this minimal polynomial from f of theta x so that means all the coefficients all the coefficients of a of x should belong to f of theta and from here you see what are the coefficients one coefficient is 1 another coefficient is minus beta so from here you can conclude that this beta belongs to f of theta but what was theta theta was a beta plus alpha so from here you could also say alpha is equal to theta minus a beta now theta is in f theta belongs to f theta that is obvious and we have just shown that beta also belongs to f theta so that means the linear combination would also belongs to beta so that means alpha which is equal to theta minus a beta would belong to f of theta so we will substitute according to this quantity we would say alpha belongs to f of theta and from these two we would say alpha and beta both belongs to f theta so this field f of alpha beta where alpha and beta have been adjoined to f is a subset of f of theta so that means this field is contained in f of theta so we can generalize this result now because theta theta was nothing but 
a beta plus alpha so from here we could directly say that f of theta is contained in f of alpha beta so accordingly say this is our equation number 3 and this is our equation number 4 from these equations we could write f of theta is equal to f of alpha comma beta so we have this result and we can generalize this result this result was true for these two terms alpha and beta but when you adjoin by induction when you adjoin one element by one element up to n elements to it so that would also be equal to f of theta so that is why we say the given extension field which was finite and separable now becomes a simple extension